Welcome to the OTP pregame presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. When it's game day for your health coverage, trust Farm Bureau Health Plans to drop the winning play. They've been backing Tennesseans for nearly 80 years. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. It is the pregame edition, and we have our first return guest to the Snickers hot seat on the pregame edition. It is Ramon Foster of Titans Radio and 104.5 The Zone. Welcome. Thank you. Thank for, you for coming back. I'm <laughs> glad to be the first one to come back. Mm-hmm. When you do it five times, you get a jacket, like mm-hmm. on Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. Live. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, Amy had on a sweet jacket getting me from the lobby, okay, because I had to declare that I was hers, okay, <laughs> I, he before did. I could come up. Yep. And she had on this sweet satin jacket that I was Satin just, jacket? Yeah. It's a starter jacket I stole out of someone's office. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was just walking through and got a little chilly, but... Yeah. It was sitting on the back of a chair, so I nabbed it. Did this belong to your husband? It did belong to my husband. Um, <laughs> I wanted to say that because I, <laughs> I didn't want people to think you just went into random people's offices. But I've told you that's my whole plan for decorating this room is taking things off of people's desks, and they won't know unless they watch the OTP and they see, like, a picture of their kids on a shelf. That would be really weird. Or sitting weird. on our desk. That would be very strange. <laughs> or like a little trophy. Okay, speaking of pictures. <laughs> speaking good. of pictures and yeah. speaking of strange. I, I The hashtag old photos thing. Oh, my oh gosh. My. All right. I, I want to talk about this for just because we're all involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Ashley Farrell brought in pictures of all of us on Sunday. Yep. And apparently this is a thing that some people, they hand them a copy of a picture of them and then you're supposed to sign it. And the pictures are at various times. Like Ramon's yeah. picture, was you in a lion suit? Yes, I was. It was a Halloween outfit that okay. I bought, mm-hmm. Mike. But this was recent, right? Yeah, this was uh, a couple years ago. Uh, last 2017. Okay. Yeah, 2017. So pretty recent. Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. recent. Uh, mine... <laughs> <laughs> was a photo of me when I was probably four. Yeah. yeah. You were young. Yeah. You looked a little. I, I mean, and that was a while ago. You had yeah. on a nice jacket, It was though. sporty. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody, here's the thing. If somebody was wearing that jacket yeah. today. It'd be they, cool. They would say, and, and mm-hmm. male or female, yeah. they would say, that is a hip jacket. That is a hip yep. jacket. It you was. You were very hip when you were four or five. Four or five. Yeah. I, I don't know, but it would be today. But I was what? made fun of because of the haircut. Yes. Uh, yeah. Apparently, the haircut wasn't even well, across the front. It's hard to cut a toddler's hair. Well, that's right. <laughs> it is. It really that's, is. That's right. So it might so, have been a you problem. So, I mean, and, and, and the other question I have is where did we get the photo? And that uh, came from my daughter. Sure did. Years ago, actually. Yeah. Sorry. So she was um, complicit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which... Your family usually plays along with our funny little games, which we really appreciate. Thank you, Keith family. Um, (laughs) But, yeah, that was actually a picture that we had used for something else years ago that you may not have actually seen. No, I did see it. And they did – they did not oh, use it. Oh, it was a Delta Dental. So, That's what it was. So Delta Dental used to have a feature yeah. on the Mike Vrabel show. Okay. Yep. And they would show young pictures, like either baby pictures or sort of toddler pictures or maybe even grade school pictures yeah. of, of Titans players. Okay. And Mike would guess the player. Yep. I like that game. Now, he acted like he hated it. He loved it. He, he loved did. it. He, yeah. thought it, he thought it was the greatest thing in the world. He had more fun doing it. He didn't like to be wrong. Wow. Because he's very competitive. Yep. And, but, it, but it was a lot of fun on his TV show. So we did that. Well, one of them was going to be you. Well, it was. So Ashley posted pictures of me and Mike, Mike Vrabel, Mike Keith and Mike oh. Vrabel. And Mike Vrabel did not recognize the picture of himself or of me. Wow. Now, I would say the picture of me. Looks pretty much like me. You can pick yeah. out. You can see it. Yeah. You can yeah. see you're like, oh, okay, I, yeah. I get yeah. that. Uh, but he did not get him himself. Wow. That which was awesome. great. It made Ashley Farrell so happy. Because you don't look at yourself, I guess, well, as much. Well, but you've probably seen one at one point yeah. where you recognize an outfit or a time That's period. Well, or, or like your kids look like you when you were little. Right. So yeah, you'd at least right. see so. like essence of your children maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It but was it was really it was really funny. 
Anyway, so, that's where that picture I, came from. Uh, okay, so that picture was one that was not used. but And if you go to at 10 voice, at T-E-N-N voice, or I guess at Titans Amy, yep. or at the Ramon Foster. No, just Ramon Foster. We dropped the the. Ooh. Is that on Twitter or is that on Instagram? On I Twitter. Think, I think on Instagram oh, you're still the, the Ramon yes, Foster. Yes, yes, I got my old account. So you can see the video of us being shown these photos, which was kind of bizarre. Now, yours... I thought was tragic. Well, it was it was like a middle school photo, right? It sure was. Which I it, thought it, yeah. was extremely low down because it's I, dirty. I, Nobody I, looks I good mean, in middle school. So I'm, but the th- the excuse that I have is I'm four yeah. or I'm three or something. I don't get that luxury. You're you're, you're mm-hmm. in middle school. We clearly have the braces on. I have braces. It is, I mean. Early 2000s fashion, which is not good. I didn't uh, see all the, the way around. Oh, uh, yeah. It's I peaked not, the fashion. He did. Ramon bumped on it because you lived <laughs> I it. I lived it. Because you know. Yeah. So, what are you, like 12 um, or 13? I'm about 12, I think. I'm on a youth group trip to Florida, hence the flower in my hair. Hmm. Um, I thought that was just the norm. Yeah, no, that wasn't. That was a special <laughs> occasion. She flower. goes to school with a flower. Yeah, in her no, hair. no, that was a special occasion treat. We went to a. Um, Oh, my gosh. What was it called? Acquire the Fire. It was like a big youth group conference that we would go to every year. And we went Did you get in, in trouble for smoking? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. Because you seemed like that kid. No, no, she no. She definitely. Oh, in no. the picture, she did uh, look uh, like that no. kid. Mike, he, I never, never. Uh-uh. I was on a youth group well, trip. Well, uh, again, no, that not, doesn't make any difference. No, it does not. My <laughs> choice. No. Oh, no. I was the, we will follow the rules. We will. Hundred percent, Mike. You can so ask what anybody. Changed? I know. I, I don't know. I just I where did all up. that go? <laughs> I grew up. I guess you followed um, no rules now. Yeah, but um, the, yeah, there's a lot of things about that. Have picture. people on social media reacted to that photo of you in in various ways? Uh, not so much because m- a lot of my followers remember the time, and it's like, oh, I had that shirt. Yeah, I got it at Abercrombie. Yeah. Like we all had the same five T-shirts. Like uh, we all did era. the same thing. Yeah, we all had very he really skinny got eyebrows. Off easy. I did because you did. it's that kind was, of I did. full-grown adult Ramon lion suit. It's obviously a Halloween. Yeah, yeah. and there's a Ashley commercial the out right now dirty. with somebody in a lion suit or something. Yeah. And yeah. So it's like, oh, that's fun. I, I'm three. You, you you know what got what 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 saved me. As I'm not sure as anybody's befriended me yet on like Facebook. That's where most mm-hmm. of my old stuff is at. So that's of course. I'm where not on it, Facebook. Well, oh, well, that's that's again. usually where it where it's all the old stuff is at. Because if I'm not mistaken, that's what Lejerry Sneed said. Who's been on my Facebook mm-hmm. when he did his? Yes, because that's where all your parents will tag you or family will tag you in old or photos. Old friends from yes. your digital camera that you uploaded in 2006. A digital camera. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's here's my problem is where did Ashley she get that photo uh, from Facebook? See? Ashley <laughs> Farrell and I. Have been friends since 2000. Let's see, uh, 2008. Maybe? And you're still friends even after this. And That's we are wild. still friends now. But she has access to photos that, like, if you guys were to be my friend on Facebook now, you wouldn't have access to ah. because I have certain limitations <laughs> on things. Because I don't need. Can you the Russians seeing get those? Probably. Yeah. I mean, the Russians Iran? can have whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, they, different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, before I understood how, like privacy settings worked ashley had access to just like a full smorgasbord of my photos okay from my my youth before we knew that social media is forever yeah well i mean the early adopters here there's a lot of scary stuff online because we didn't really understand well, what it was. I just want to say I felt badly for you. I felt badly it was for a, me too. It was a middle school photo. It's mean. I, I didn't think it was bad. No, I mean, I it's... thought you. It looked very much like you. It was like you were not tragic at that age, like oh. some people. Oh, you uh, thought yeah. you thought the photo was tragic, but you were not. It was good. I appreciate it was that. it Thank was you fine. Guys. You're very kind. But still, yeah. the the memory of seeing that is particularly jarring to the person. Yeah, yeah. it is. It 
Because when my mother pulls that stuff out, I'm like, oh. oh yeah, yeah. You know. no, no. Like a deer in the headlights. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, no, you got We no still doubt. have the photo albums. See, I, yeah, uh-huh. my aunties and stuff have uh, have that stuff. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't I don't know if I really want to see all of those things. Mm-mm. Okay. You got to grow into your face but and your, your hands. But your eyebrows were arched at the time, though, in the seventh grade. I mean, you skinny. had that together. Skinny. You did have that together. Really but I just, skinny. But you really weren't the kid on the youth trip who got busted for smoking. Oh, no. I was the tattle <laughs> on the youth trip. You were a tattle. Oh, yeah. How about that? Yep. Look at that. Well, then I have, Shout less, out. Then I have less sympathy for you. AIC <laughs> youth okay. group. Y'all know. Let's get into yeah, the OTP pregame. But, again, follow us on the socials because there is some amusing stuff occasionally. And, and I found this amusing. I was glad to be part of a trend of some sort. It felt great. Being part of a trend. You are yes. the trend, Mike. Mike no, but I you mean, it was so <laughs> badly want to be on TikTok. Talk. I think you should just do it. I, I don't haven't got it. I think you do. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You Why, have I've one? never said I want to be no, on TikTok. I know, but you have. There are signs. <laughs> I think you you really like the trends. I do and like I to th- follow that. Like everybody and they live doing on the, the Megan Trainer dance from yeah. the perfect. Marriage, or, a or perfect the, couple, the, the "Give Me My Money" thing. Like, have is that a thing now? Oh my gosh, Mike, just do it, man. Just but haven't done it. Like say, both but feet. don't you like seeing all the people doing the Megan Trainer song dance from a perfect couple? I'm gonna be honest. I haven't seen a single person doing that. Oh, it's, and it's everywhere. Because everything that I follow on social media is like how to potty train your kid, oh, how to clean okay. your house in five right, minutes. Let's get on. How to like? <laughs> yeah. so, let it's me just terrible. say to the OT people. I apologize. I was just trying to. This is my I, I social know. media right okay, now. Okay, here we go. It's a phase of life. It'll Topic end. one for Ramon Foster. <laughs> Let's do All it. right, when the offensive line has a tough game, what is the main thing, regardless of offensive line coach, team, personnel, whatever? What is the main thing that is being stressed in the Titans offensive line room this week preparing for the Dolphins? It's simple. Um, don't overcorrect. And just go back to the basics. That's what it is. When you when you lose or have bad games, when you uh, do something you've never done before, like athletes sometimes like to go the opposite direction. Well, if this didn't work, well, if I'm doing back squats, well, maybe I should just do bands. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Continue to do your back squats. Don't change anything up. The technique has been proven to work. So let's focus in on those things right there. And the other side of it, too, is just keeping it simple as far as um, – the run game. Are we just trying to find our blocks and our double teams and stay on the same level? Are we communicating? Those are the things that have to happen in moments like this when you have a bad game. Please don't overcorrect and go outside of yourself. If you're not a guy that's used to running fast out of your sense, don't start going slow or slow down. Those are the things that have to happen. My offensive line I've been saying for like the last couple of weeks is um, like being an artist. It just is. And I know it just Amy, is. It is it's, it's 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 like being an artist. Okay. Think about when you were in that picture and you were five, four years old and you first learned how to draw a stick figure. Okay. And when you got older, if you were interested in art, you started sketching and shading. You get better with time. That's offensive line play right there. You want to be ascending up. I almost look at I've I've been joking by saying it's like Bob Ross. Right? A pretty painter. trees. Pretty trees. But I'm sure his trees were trash in the beginning. <laughs> okay? By the time Bob Ross was leaving off of the TV, he could paint clouds and trees better than he could put a mark here and come back to it later. It's like, oh, look at that. That's a bird in the sky. And you didn't realize that little small mark was there. What I'm saying is you get better the more reps you get, the more common it becomes to you, and the more you just say – I just need to add a little and not too much. Okay. And eventually the big picture shows up. That's where I am with this offensive line. And specifically a guy like Peter Skaronsky who had a iffy week last week. It was below the line, if we can be honest, right, with his results that he had. There's no need to overcorrect. There is no need to try to say we need to complicate things anymore. Bring it back to the basics and do what you know is just going to Just keep doing it. Just keep doing your thing. And and here's what I've been <laughs> also telling folks. It, you can't rush this process. There were expectations, yes, to start the season a certain type of way. But you can't rush the process of saying, by year three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11, the payoff and the groans and pains that you have now, will, you will see the benefit from it. Football is so emotional because it's a – we only get one a week. You you can get a Sunday and a Thursday, but it's still only one a week, right? And we want the results now in football. 
it, and it takes 11 people to be on the same page to get good results. Basketball, you have one guy that can make a, a school, right, or NBA team that much better. Football, that's not necessarily the case. So, and especially with the offensive line, the pace has to be slowed down. The expectations of directly seeing results right now have to be slowed down. I think we've seen good things out of J.C. Do you say, I like that. We can build on that. But I still don't want to make him jump, you know, 12 feet down from the diving board. No, no, no. We still need to just dip our toe in and let this process handle itself. So when Will Levis says in his media availability earlier today, and he was talking specifically about Nicholas Petit Frere, but I I think that it can kind of be applied to the entire offensive line to a point where he says, I am going to continue to play as if those guys are going to give me exactly what I need. I'm going to continue to trust that they are going to do exactly what they're doing because I can't change my process to adjust to that. Does that make you feel better as an offensive lineman that this guy still trusts us to do the job that we are being asked to do? You know what? He did. Mm -hmm. He actually added pressure to me, and I think that's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. And if I heard that publicly be said, I'd say, well, I got to get on my job. I have to make sure that I am at least keeping his trust because that's what he's saying. If you guys trust that I'm your quarterback, if you guys trust that I can make plays for you, well, the pressure's on you to give me the time, to give me the space to make plays. I actually think that's a good thing to have peer pressure. Peer pressure is good in sports. And as it pertains to, you know, a guy like MPF, it comes down to sometimes just strain. I always tell younger guys, football is a balance of knowledge and having the right amount of strain to finish the job. Because if you're just doing football – you're going to get pushed around. you got to actually care and push and give a little bit more. And I think that's what he's asking of his offensive line because we've heard and we know this to be true. Coach Bill Callahan is good at what he does. Mm-hmm. We saw the preseason training of it. Now, again, this group is young. It's new. It's different parts. Guys, I mean, Dylan Radins moved over to the right side. NPF missed most of camp. And now we're all in and figuring this thing out. The basics is there. You have to. So to your point, though, Amy – I'd much rather them feel the pressure of Will Levis saying, help me help you, because I got the goods if you allow me to show it. So let me ask you about Will's comment. Not too much, though. Not from too the much. From the quarterback to say that totally appropriate in terms of – Yes, 100%. Even if, even if he's not a perennial guy in this league just yet, they threw him the keys to the franchise. Right. He should be able to challenge those guys. And here's the other thing, too. And his play not, might, might not match his leadership on the field, but I guarantee you inside of this building, he's leading as much as he possibly right. can for a guy that's going into year two. And I'm okay with that because as young as they are, as much as they hadn't seen, somebody has to step up. Now, I did see a little bit of J.C. Latham this past weekend being vocal. We saw last year with Tajay. Certain guys have to step up, and he is the quarterback of this franchise. He's a captain on this team. I don't think that's too much. And, again, to be able to publicly challenge one of your teammates is probably one of the best things you can do. Coaches do it all the time. They coach through press conferences often. It's just that it's good to see him actually, I think, throw it back into the right sides, you know, table to say, hey, I'm going to do my job. Do yours. Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. (laughs) SeatGeek. Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. All right, so I have an aside question for you. This is not one of the official five, but this is for Amy. Okay. Ramon Foster and Dolphins defensive lineman Calais Campbell were both born in 1986. Okay. Who is older? Is Ramon Foster older than Calais Campbell, or is Calais Campbell older than Ramon Foster? Now, I don't ask that to Ramon because he knows his birthday. Yeah. 
And so – And I don't know Ramon's and birthday. And you don't know Ramon's birthday. See, yeah. not even Facebook friends and nothing. Yeah. Like, nothing, no, man. Nothing. Okay, uh, I so mean, which, who, which uh, player is older? I'm going to say Clayus Campbell is older. Ramon is older. You're yeah. older. His birthday is January 7th. Yes. So uh, very early in 86. Calais I missed just, your birthday. I'm Calais sorry. just turned 38. Yeah. You're both 38 years old. Okay, so that relates – that's pretty – Calais Campbell. I didn't know you were so old. <laughs> Calais is still rolling. <laughs> yeah, he is. I thought I thought about that as I heard uh, Coach Mack and um, Rat speaking about it last night. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and trust me, I've I've actually wrestled Mike um, and Amy like the last couple of years. Like, should I have squeezed out one or two more years? Because the game is fit for guys that played consistent play especially in you the could offensive have done line. It. Mm-hmm. I could have got to but the also the year I retired was 2020 the pandemic hit yeah so I was glad I retired then but watching him be 38 and he's transformed his body he's gone to other teams but here's the separator though too other than I guess Trent's younger than me too Trent Williams he can be in the defensive player this is where I always trash defensive <laughs> linemen well that's fine <laughs> yeah please they can feel get free. two plays and be done I have to be out there for the full 70 plays. There is no playoff for offensive linemen. So there's also that. Too. Okay. Yeah. That's so me he, make, that's, I'm excuse making. So yeah. here's the second topic related to Calais. Okay. There are tall guys. There are big guys. But at 6'8", he's listed like 307. I think he's probably – he probably weighs more than that. I think he's lighter. Do you really? I do. I've seen him. He, he well, he's big. He's playing. Yeah, big. he's six eight. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's, yeah. he's six eight. He's around three hundred and something. Three ten. His arms are nearly thirty six inch long. Calais Campbell is one of a kind. As an offensive lineman, how do you try to handle Calais Campbell, who the Titans will see Monday night? I played against him a few times. You got to go take the fight to Calais in a sense, but not necessarily. I cut him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean by, by taking the fight to him. And I told him after, was like, man, I got to slow you down. Because here's the thing about him. He's big. Oh. He's tall. Yeah. He's rangy. And he's strong. He's got, like, old man that works at a car shop strength. Yeah. If you understand what I'm saying. Like, he can turn Wait a lug a nut. He's got yeah. old man who works at a car yeah. shop type strength. Yeah. Is that We've like got, being country yeah. strong? That's the yeah. same. Yeah. But, but – but we've gotten Bob Ross on this show. God, I love this podcast. And we've got I love it so old hard. man who works at a car shop yeah. strength. Yes. Ramon wins he, the day. He doesn't use an air jack at all. You hear me? He's he's one of the guys. Give me that wrench and he looses the lug nut. Like that's him. He changed tires and, and jacket. the young strong back guys can't do that. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's what they call the young guys. You, you're the strong backs. Yeah, exactly. You don't use air compressors <laughs> in his car shop, no. okay? At all. But what I what I do know is this. He's got very long arms. He's got strength. And on top of that, too, now he's very smart in how he can finesse you, too. Meaning he can bull rush you if you want, but he can also fake bull rush and go over the top of you because he's so tall and long. Uh, So how do you attack him? I, I, I seriously, I would go into this game. I see him rushing on first. Uh, I mean, on third down, I am setting him, and then I'm going low to cut him because I can do that as a defender. I gotta at least let him know I'm willing to slow you down by any means I possibly can. And at that point right there, it's literally staying in front of him. It's not as fast as he once was. No, he's just more savvy. Does he get angry when you cut him? With me, he did. <laughs> with me he did because he understood the gamesmanship and what I was trying to do to him one of the last because you're a crafty veteran I had yeah. to be and again I'm as tall as he is so it's a matter it was a battle of the giants essentially and with his you're 6'8 no I'm 6'6 six, six. okay I'm, I'm not are you, my arms are, are you just shrinking? as long no you not yet six, eight? no I was never 6'8 I was 6'5 okay. six, six, five and 5'8 five so okay. with cleats that's 6'6 six, six. Six, six. yes um, but <laughs> matching arms with him, Mike, is where technically with a guy like Peter Skaronsky this week, you have to stay square, which has been one of his issues I've seen. He he shifts his legs way too much because I think that's the tackle. The tackle in him. In him still. Yeah. Yes. Stay square. And I, it sounds funny. Here's another term. You might take it. But I would set square with Calais and say, let's dance. So I would literally be in line dance with him just – Wherever you go, I'm going. I'm not trying to bull rush you too much. I ain't trying to dominate you. I'm just trying to block you, and that's all I need to get done. And the moment he raises his hands, I punch him in the chest to get him down because he at 6'8", is a dude that bats the ball down all the time. So you basically just have to get in his way. Get 
Just get in his way. What's the objective of an offensive lineman to block? Yeah. And if I stop his bull rush and if I stop him from getting close to the quarterback, job is done. You know what coaches will give you? Check. You know how you get two checks? It's like if I block him and also finish. With Calais, you get in front of him and you move him around in the the run game as much as you possibly can. If I'm a young bull like Peter or Dylan Radens, this is where I attack. I beat you up in the run game because you can't sustain as much as my youth is allowing me to. It's because he's thirty-eight. It's a. That's what I mean by like it's an art to figure out how to play my game, be confident in my game, and putting up the little birds in the cloud. No trash trees. We don't have time for that. <laughs> he's fine. I think he's a Hall of Famer easily. You know why? As you just said, one hundred and seven and a half. He's over the hundred sack. Under, yeah, Phew. but I mean, he's also started like 235 games and played in 262 games in the line. If when you're like Bruce Matthews, when you're an offensive lineman mm-hmm. and you're over 200 games, if you are that kind of quality player, you know, you, you're not just a journeyman who's no. had a really nice career and a long career. But this is not like a special teams player or a quarterback or Mm -hmm. a kicker. Um, This is a guy in the defensive line, and he's played for Arizona. He's played for Baltimore. He's played for Jacksonville. He's played for Atlanta last year. We saw him last year. I mean, he's – He continues to get calls. Yeah. And and, and to your point, like, I think my career sack as offensive linemen don't get him. I'm not bitter at all, okay? (laughs) Uh, But I have (laughs) – I have, I think, like 156 starts Mm -hmm. or something, and he's got 240-plus starts, to your point. Yeah. And you mentioned he's not a journeyman, and he still gets phone calls to play D-line. If I'm not mistaken, he also may have the record or the most – or the active player with the most block. Block kicks. You knew – so he is a special teamer. But but he's an all-around. And the funny thing is, in his early days in Arizona – he was good. Yeah. I mean, he was he was a good player, but he wasn't and, – and everybody would mention him because he was so unusual physically. As he got later in his Arizona tenure, and then when he, when he moved on, it was like, oh, my goodness, he's become a dominant yeah. type player. Well, you mean to tell me it takes years for players to develop? Well, <laughs> I mean – Wait had, a minute. I know, I know. He had know. six and a half sacks last year for the Falcons. Crazy. And you know what's even more fascinating, too, and I followed him. But I, it, he's in my top five list of defensive linemen. He just is. And I think we understand why now, just still doing it at 38. Um, but in high school, going to the University of Miami, the U, I think he showed up on campus at like 6'8", 190. It was crazy. So he wasn't even the guy that he was no. ever going to be at the University of Miami. And, like, That's imagine wild. him. Like, he was a basketball player mm-hmm. at right. that size. Right. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Titans fans, with a Kroger Boost membership, you'll score big with double fuel points, free delivery, and lots more. Go to Kroger.com slash boost for details. Kroger, official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. We're going to go for question number three now. The Titans are looking for more pressure on the passer. Seven sacks recorded in the first three games. What have the three opponents done from a pass protection scheme standpoint to make it hard for the Titans to get to opposing quarterbacks? Have you noticed anything? Um, I think last game, if we go with Green Bay, I think opening up with the pass to stop the rush. And it was quick passes on a run. If I can just think about what Green Bay did. They didn't necessarily move the pocket as much. It was get the ball, well, run the ball first. They established that, which hadn't been done all this year. Green Bay Bay took a totally different approach um, this past weekend. Um, They established a run and then took the deep shots. And they also started the game quick with the quick passes also. That's something that happened uh, against them. With uh, Aaron Rodgers and, and the Jets, I honestly do think that until turnovers happen, they had Aaron Rodgers reeling. What Aaron Rodgers and, and the New York Jets did was they allowed themselves to stay on the field longer. And when you got a veteran quarterback 
right? When you have a veteran quarterback, you said it all last week. It's, I mean, that, that week, it's nothing he hasn't seen. Right. Eventually, he's going to crack the code. So to get more of a rush, Mike, is is – Honestly, just settle into what your identity is going to be. I think we all were rocked by seeing Green Bay run the way they did. Week one, you did everything you needed, except turnovers don't help you. What's happened with the rush is teams settle in eventually offensively to where the offense has to be able to also complementary football. The offense and special teams, because of turnovers, has to complement this defense to where they can, you know, pin their ears back and get to the quarterback. Uh, Green Bay got to a point last week where there was no more real passing. You know, it was stop the run as much as you possibly can. So I honestly think, Mike, it's been three different variations of game plans that they've seen. One other thing, too, that's important to note, opponents have rushed it 83 times. They've only dropped back 85 times. So that's a you know that's twenty eight times a game. That's not a lot. No. Of, you you haven't forced anybody to throw forty to forty five times yet, which more chances obviously equals more sacks. It does, and short field doesn't help the defense right. either. Right. Um. So there's a lot of context to it. This defense is good. Okay. Yes, it is still. All right. Point number four for Ramon Foster on the OTP pregame presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans, and you're in on this one too. Oh, cool. I'm going to let Ramon go first since he's our special guest in the Snickers hot seat. Special. You can have one if you want. Who do you expect to start at quarterback for the Miami Dolphins on Monday night? Uh, Snoop Huntley. Tyler Huntley. Tyler Huntley. Uh, He's proven it. He's the style of quarterback that I think Coach McDaniels like. Um, And they didn't get a whole lot out of their starter last weekend either. That offense has a lot of weapons. Again, veteran offensive linemen. Uh, D linemen and quarterbacks will forever get jobs as long as they show they're competent. It's the same way we saw Andy Dalton replace Bryce Young in Carolina. When you know the offense can work, you'll get results for a guy that knows how to run it. And that's why I think Ty Huntley comes into place. Also, considering what Green Bay did, um, he's a runnable guy. Mm -hmm. Escapability he has. Um, So I see it being Ty Huntley. I agree with that. If for no other reason, he seems to be like, fully in one piece and that feels like a big deal yeah. for Miami right now. Um yeah, I think that he's he's the natural choice. Okay, so a couple of things about Tyler Huntley just for the OT people to have. Uh you can read along. It's <laughs> fine. I mean you're looking at my I know, I'm sorry. It's like I'm, you're back in middle school. It's, I know. That, that, it's yeah. the picture. It's the girl from middle school. I'm sorry. I was just I saw numbers and I got excited. <laughs> okay. So, Get your own. <laughs> 6 one, 205. He went to Utah, but he's from the Miami area. So that's an interesting what point. A, what a difference of scenery there. Yeah, it's a little change. Okay. Variety. Yeah, let's say, I'm here in Miami. I love it. Let's go to Utah. Utah. No, I, I think that was kind of based on the opportunity. Okay. But anyway, um, he's 3-7 and seven as a starter, so he does have 10 starts. A lot of those have come late in seasons. Uh, in the 21 season – I guess, took over for Lamar when mm-hmm. he was hurt. He's been in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, got a start against Pittsburgh in week 18 last year. Uh, passed for 146 yards and a touchdown in a loss. Ran eight times for 40 yards. So he's completed 62% of his passes, seven touchdowns, seven interceptions, sacked 26 times, passer rating of 75.7, but running – 88 carries, 429 yards, um, a long of 35, and a couple of touchdowns. So they could do a lot of things to get him outside of the pocket. One note for uh, the OT people, six fumbles in 10 starts. Interesting. Yeah. So you can make him – I mean, he has 13 turnovers in 10 starts with the interception. So He can be got. Correct. He has been got. He yeah. has been gotten. Um, also, throwing his record too, Pro Bowler for the year that every quarterback turned down the Pro Bowl. He's got one of them under his belt too, if I'm not mistaken. It's three and seven as a as a, as a starter. Yeah, that's yeah, wild. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, every year there's one where it's like, how did you? What yeah. are you doing here? Yeah. yeah. Well, can't take it away from him. Nope, well, proud but, of him. <laughs> Frame the jersey. But you've got it in their offense. The reason I think both of you make a lot of sense saying that Tyler Huntley would be the guy, they have so much speed. And if you know, and he's got the extra day to prepare, if you know that you have to defend the quarterback running, maybe as a defense you've got to back up just a little bit because you're fearful that, 
one of the running backs. Achan can get loose and he can run, run. We know that Waddle can run, run, and Cheetah can really yeah. run. And, I mean, they've got Jonu Smith, too, a tight end who can really run. They do. And also Jalen Wright, who ran a 4-3 at oh, the Oh, yeah. And he played combine. 13 snaps last week. So, as an incorporation there. And, and you know, like you guys know, like I know, this is a copycat league. You had a very similar quarterback last week with Malik Willis that had those same similar traits in a sense. Right. And, and not that much experience as a starter. Exactly. So, I, I, I see some things that are RPOs the same way that they did with, um, with Green Bay. Um, but you can affect him, I feel like, a little bit more. I'm not sure if he has – he'll understand where to go with the ball as much. Well, and he's got the experience. When you have all of those other weapons within your offense, you need someone who can hold hold everything together, make plays when they have to, but more yeah. can be a vehicle to getting everybody else the opportunity to go. This is a guy who would understand how to do that, and I think that sets everyone up for success. And, oh, by the way, you have to account for the quarterback because he also can do things. That's fair. Yeah, and the biggest issue for him may be what, where, where do I go? You know, does he go to Waddle? Does he go to uh, you know Tyreek Hill often, or does he you know dump down to his wide? I mean, to his running backs. Like he's got options. It's a matter of how he processes where the ball goes too, because that's always a challenge too. The many folks don't speak about who's my guy that I'm going to use this day. I'm bothered that the Titans are not going to have Cheeto Wuze at corner for this game. Yeah, uh, I think it's exciting for Brownlee. Jarvis has played well. He's going back to his hometown. I mean, that's great. A lot of juice. Yep. A lot. And Very excited. Y- and yet, he's never seen anything quite like this speed. Cheeto knows. It's like you're talking earlier about blocking Calais Campbell. It's like you're like, okay, now I'm just going to stay in front of you, and I'm not going to win on style points, but if you don't win, I win. Yes. Cheeto Awuze knows when you're tackling these guys on a quick screen – just get them down, you know, yeah. you're, you're not going to get any form tackle. You're not going to get any special highlight reel type of moment. Yeah. And and it's also the aspect of playing on Monday nights. Mm-hmm. Sunday and Monday nights are a lot. It's just different also. Okay. Let me yeah. stop you because that's point five. <laughs> oh. Look, Don't so, scoop his I, question. I didn't so, steal him. He's so good. <laughs> Don't scoop his question. What do players like – best about Monday night football and what do players like least about Monday night football? That's point five. Ooh. Least I'll go first. Uh, least will go first here. Least is it shortens your week on for next yeah. week. That's possibly the worst thing about And if you lose, everybody watch you lose it's on Monday night Not football. Great. <laughs> um, what you love about it is this is what you grow up grew, grew up saw, seeing. It's the intros. It's dun, 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 dun. it's all of the theatrics. It's there's no other. Listen to me. I'm looking dead in the. There's no other broadcast feeling excitement you get other than knowing there's nothing else going on on TV but us. And I'm a part of this show. And so for the teachers that said, "Hey, you you might not be this good," or for the girlfriend that dumped you and now got to watch you on Monday Night Football oh, wow. for. Everything seems you personal. Know, yeah. All the naysayers. Like, that's what I used to say to my guys. Like, if you ever wanted to prove somebody wrong and make a name for yourself, what else is every the majority of the United States watching? Do you want to say the girlfriend's name? That We name names on the OTT. Yeah, nah, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, he's a guest. He doesn't have to. Nah, not but it, this one. It felt like there was someone specific. Oh, yeah. He was talking to one person. I actually was going more towards the teacher than the girlfriend. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, no, You're welcome enough. to name names. Yeah. No. Well, this this one particular teacher, it, she was awesome and actually motivated me. She was a Vols fan on top of it, too. Okay. Mm. Uh, Ms., and I'll tell this story. Ms. Martha Webb, she got on Ms. to me. Webb. Miss Webb, oh my gosh, she was my uh, trigonometry teacher in high school. And it was a great moment. And I was feeling myself at the time, and I'm getting recruited highly, and everything's going my way. And Tennessee, Coach Foreman's walking into the school and everything. And I was letting my grades slip. And she told me, she said, Ramon, you can go on and play all the football you want to. But if you don't have your grades, you're not going to go far at all. 
And I was so mad. I was so mad. It was a great She popped teaching. your bubble. Oh, my gosh. I think I just breezed through another trigonometry test. Mind you, I'm in advanced classes, too. So I'm not oh, an wow. idiot. Look at him. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dropping senior, the advanced geez, classes. Senior Foster class show? president, Jeez. too. Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is this. She didn't deny me or anything. But it was, I know guys have teachers that challenge them or deny them. And I just always like to bring that up because in order to go to the NFL, you do have to go to school. And I always just try to say, for the naysayers that said you couldn't, go show them on Monday night. Like, it gives me chills thinking about that. You're not a player. I'm sure not. Well, you kind of are. But in a different way. <laughs> I am. Uh, sure. What do you like best about Monday night football and what do you like least about Monday night football? I think Ramon's point about Monday night football being the thing that I mean, that is the pinnacle of sports in my mind. Monday night football. Everybody watches Monday night football. Everybody knows the big moments that happen on Monday night football. It's the show. It's the everything about it. You can't, in my mind, find a sporting event that feels the way that standing on sidelines of a Monday night football game feels. It just doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, and so that's the thing that I like the most. The thing that I like the least is waiting all darn day for a Monday night football game. I hate night games. I hate them. Well, it's the reason mo- I got married at 10 o'clock in the morning. I hate <laughs> waiting. I hate it. So and let's she just did. do I did. So let's but just you know do what? it in she, the morning. This is the greatest thing about her getting married at 10 o'clock in the morning. She had breakfast as the meal. Waffles. That's Congratulations. So Thanks for coming. Wasn't that? It was <laughs> I went all the way to Florida to her wedding yeah. because I heard what the food was going to be. Well, You're not wrong at all. I like her husband up. a lot. He's mm-hmm. a great guy. Yes. I think she's, you know, she's someone I work with, so you kind of have you to. You have to go, yeah. yeah. Uh, you kind of got to go. Yeah. yeah. But she had breakfast. I would redo mine and do breakfast, too. I know. I've been to, it, like, two since. It was well, I mean, were, it was well done. Yeah. You, you also shortened the bar time for the folks that got to wait around all day, too, if you got oh, that didn't stop them. Yeah. I know. No, that didn't stop Walk in the way, door. Here's your it champagne. Was, it was an interesting crowd. By uh, the way, uh, I will say, too, <laughs> Miss Webb, she was not the villain. I was. Well, right. Mm, well, we get I, it. Yeah, oh, my God. She's a hero in there. awesome. She is. And also, Miss Ann Chipman, who told me I was going to play for UT. Those two teachers right there forever. Is that the one that took you to see Javon Curse when he was in town for the caravan? Yes. Do you know this story? No. Yes. So you're in junior high school. I'm in, yeah, eighth grade. We mm, bring Ramon, we bring Javon Curse with two Ripley. Yeah, two Ripley at the Ace Hardware. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. she took you out of yes, class or study hall. Took us out of class. Okay. To go to Ace Hardware because the Titans were doing the big intro on the Titans Caravan. Yeah. And he was there and a few other guys. And at that moment, I was hooked. Like, Miss <gasps> Ann, she, she told me I was going to the University of Tennessee. And I was just like, okay, whatever. I'm young. So, okay. Titans Caravan. Yes. Changed Ramon's life as a 12 or 13 year old. You know what? And my brother was also changed by the freak, too, because he started wearing the high black socks like the freak used to wear his socks and the gloves. Like, we modeled ourselves after him because I only wanted to play um, D line. So I was a DN. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was fascinating. Wow. How about that? Look at that. Ramon and I have that. I was there. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't change his life, but no. I was there. Well, you have now, But Mike. Javon Thank did, you. and you that have. counts. <laughs> Thank you You so got much. him there. I mean, to that Ace Hardware. Good job, Mike. And that's a good segue for the key ingredients of the game. Ooh. Delivered by Little Caesars Pizza. Hold your boxes. Yep. There he is. Ramon is a fabulous guest. Thank you. All right, so Wait. are we ready for the keys? No. Okay, Hold. tell me when. I love the clock version of this. Well, well if she actually starts it. Okay. She actually, uh, <laughs> two weeks ago, she set her alarm off at the house Hi. on her phone accidentally. All right, go. go. All right. The Miami Dolphins have more speed at the skill positions than any team in the league. Devon Achan, Jalen Waddell, and, of course, the cheetah Tyreek Hill. It's hard to simulate that speed in practice, but the Titans have tried. The challenge is key number one. Don't let these guys get loose. A five-yard gain can become a 50-yard gain with one missed tackle. Key number two, the same as last week's key number two, take care of the ball. The Titans are minus seven in turnover ratio. It's time to win the turnover battle. Why not do it on Monday Night Football? Third key, run the ball. Seriously, 11 rushes against Green Bay. That number wasn't so small because the Titans didn't want to run the ball. It happened because they fell behind. The Titans must run the ball.
Hmm. You cut a couple words out of that read there to cheat. <laughs> that was 45 seconds. Good job. Little Caesars is the official pizza partner of your Tennessee Titans. Download. Come, wait a minute. Stop. <gasps> cut to Ramon. Hold the pizza. Thank you. Go ahead. Download the Little Caesars app and get your favorites delivered today. Delivery fees apply. Now Amy Wells gets to do her favorite part of the OTP pregame. It's a mayo tovation from Hellman. <coughs> mayo Titans cheers be loud and your buffalo chicken dip make you, your mama, and the entire family proud. Hellman's, the official mayo of the Tennessee Titans. Mayo game day be delicious. That was really good. Thank you. That last little part was a kiss from from the hell, Miss Toom. It was. Oh, that was nice. Yes, that's, yeah. that's what that was. That's what it was. We get all, <laughs> we get all the sponsor stuff in the show. It's we just, did it. It's just beautiful. The it OTP really... pregame presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Ramon Foster, thank you for being here and and great insight on all of the O line stuff with what they're doing here this week with blocking Calais Campbell about the D line. I mean. Really good stuff. A mention of Bob Ross, <laughs> an old man who works in the body shop strength. Yes, yes, yes. Birds, um, chiseling, and teachers, and old girlfriends. Yes. And yes. Ramon just cutting people. That's right. Yes. <laughs> I got to laugh with him if I see him on the side. I was like, hey, you remember you came to Pittsburgh? What if you just went over and cut him before the game, just for old yeah. time's sake? <laughs> that'd be great, actually. <laughs> I think actually. the old line would appreciate it. Yeah. They would appreciate it. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty good. Well, this All is right. good stuff. Okay, so yeah. let's talk just for a second about what's coming up this weekend. Um, Titans All Access is out this weekend, and we think it's a really good show. Check local listings throughout the region for that. Do we also put that on the Titans YouTube channel at some point? Sure we do. We do. do you, do you know that? I know that, okay. yeah. <laughs> All right. I work here. On, on Saturdays. Okay, so <laughs> go to the Titans YouTube channel, which you should subscribe to anyway. You should. Because there's great Titans stuff there all week long from all different parts of the organization. So subscribe to the Titans YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch the OTP you on, sure the, can. on the you Titans can. YouTube channel. Yep. Sunday morning, we will have a Titans game day, normal mm. time, and that is 1030 Central Time, 1130 Eastern. So a Titans game day in Nashville, uh, it's on WSMV4. Yes. And so you want to watch that. And then Coach Mack and I are also going to be part of a special on WSMV starting at 4.30 on Monday. Oh, cool. 4.30 Central uh, because they they have the game locally in town. Yeah. So they have the, the game itself. Titans Radio on the air at 5 Central. Kickoff is 6.30 Central time. It is a different time than normal Monday night football because they have two games. They're doing the doubleheader. Ah. Yeah. Second week of the – I love the doubleheader. I'm not opposed to it. I love it. I like it because if I fall asleep at the end of the first one, I can probably catch the end of the next one. It's which all is nice. about her. Sleepy no, it's Amy. not. It's just kind of nice. So we hope you'll join us throughout the course of the weekend for some great Titans TV. Hopefully Titans Radio is great. Again, on the air early at 5 o'clock on Monday, kickoff at 6.30. Uh, excited to have you join us for this, and uh, let's come home with a big win. We need a big dove, especially getting back that late, Mike. Ooh. Yeah. Because Tuesday, we, I mean, we have to work all day Tuesday. Yeah, I know. We're right back at it. Dub. Dub or dub, don't dub, come dub. back. Dub, dub, dub or don't come back. Dub or don't come back. Am I going to be on your show on, on Tuesday? Absolutely. You're on because I'm normally Fridays, but do you really want me on Friday when we, we might have to make a call on that one? Mike. Right, we'll talk about. Yeah, that. we'll talk about. I'm that. A, I'll be up. Look at that show production. I know you will be. I'll be. You always ready to go because I'll be on uh, in Chattanooga at seven thirty on WGOW on Monday morning. Seven thirty Eastern on Monday or on Tuesday morning. You're very busy. And man. then on the uh, the Extreme Sports Monster in Tri Cities at eight ten Eastern. Wow. Look at Busy that. man. Everybody want a piece of Mike Key. No. It's I'll just be here that's with the my normal. We're, we're good. We're, Ashley's <laughs> telling us to end this. <laughs> it's just always fun. We have such good conversation <laughs> when Ramon comes by. Just turned into a Mike Keith promo there. At the we end. could do this. A little bit. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't can we put forget. Up that, can we put up that middle school <laughs> no, photo? Just end the show. End the show. 
Cut. The OTP pregame. <laughs> Ramon Foster, Amy Wells, Mike Keith, thanking you and Farm Bureau Health Plans for being with us and making it possible as you take part in the OTP.